people have been asking, hey, we manage our clusters via Rancher, we have our namespaces in Rancher. Virtual clusters are in between clusters and namespaces. Why can't we manage virtual clusters with Rancher? And uh, yeah, we just went ahead and built that integration to, to essentially make that possible. Hi, this is your Sapnil Bharti, and we are here at KubeCon and Cloud Native Con in Paris. And we have with us once again, Lucas Gentley, CEO of Loft Labs. Lucas, it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, good to be here with you, Swapnil. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Of course, uh, I mean, we talk regularly, but last KubeCon was in Chicago, North America, we are here in Europe. What I have been hearing is that there's a big difference in the cloud big difference in the, the adoption. So I want to hear from you what kind of difference you saw at the booth, the discussions you have, the response to the talks. Yeah, I mean, apart from, you know, obviously Paris being, a, you know, an amazing location to have a conferen conference in like this, uh, we definitely see a very, very engaged crowd. I think this is one of the biggest KubeCons ever, right? Um, and I think there's so many people here that are not at the initial baby steps of Kubernetes, right? They, they already have large deployments. They're trying to optimize what they're doing today with Kubernetes. It's really all about efficiency and scalability of uh, their Kubernetes architecture. Uh, so yeah, the conversations are a lot deeper, I feel like, this year, in, this year in particular. I think the joke will become that every year, uh, CNC will say, this is the biggest conference, this is the <laughs> biggest conference. It will become de facto because it will continue to grow. Right. Uh, now, going back to uh, Loft, going back to this conference, any announcement that you folks made here? We announced a Rancher integration. Um, so you can essentially spin up vClusters directly in Rancher. And that's really exciting because a lot of uh, you know Rancher users have been asking for this integration for you know two plus years or so. You know, vCluster was open source in 2021, so we've been around for about three years. 40 million virtual clusters have been created uh, since then and, and counting. Um, I don't actually have the latest stats out of this moment, but the number keeps on going up every time I check. It's so exciting, and yeah, people have been asking, hey. We manage our clusters via Rancher. We have our namespaces in Rancher. Virtual clusters are in between clusters and namespaces. Why can't we manage virtual clusters with Rancher? And uh, yeah, we just went ahead and built that integration to, to essentially make that possible. Excellent thing. But I mean, when you are supporting a platform Rancher, doesn't your users move away from you? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. So we don't necessarily see any of these, you know, uh, cluster managers as as, as competition. Um, we, we really see them more as complementary to what we're doing. Um, what, what is important for us is that people are using virtual clusters. We don't need to own the entire life cycle of a virtual cluster. Um, we just want you to have the best possible experience of virtual clusters. You know, when I'm asked about uh, what's your biggest competitor, it is typically the status quo. Um, so people spinning up hundreds and even thousands of little clusters and running them super inefficiently, right? Um, or people using namespaces and not having any clear level of isolation between these namespaces and these shared uh, multi-tenant clusters. Um, that is the status quo. And actually, that is our biggest competitor. Um, so we want to partner with everyone who enables you to spin up more virtual clusters. and then. Ideally, you know, um, in terms of our business model, we really, uh, we have a vCluster Pro, as you know, um, and vCluster Pro is essentially this more secure, more scalable, and more enterprise grade version of vCluster. So ideally, you'll start using Rancher and, you know, you spin up your virtual clusters with it, and then you hit that uh, scale and that need for, uh, you know, the security layer and for uh, that additional scalability of, of vCluster Pro. Um, and that's a that's a really great solution, um, but yeah, again, we're 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 pushing everybody uh, to just spin up as many virtual clusters as possible, and obviously, pan, uh, you know, uh, you know, building an, an integration for for Rancher is a, is a great step to tap into that community as well. So the way I look at it, that first of all, it's like meeting customers wherever they are, you know, and second is that if they do need, then we can start pros there for their additional. Uh, are you also planning to add more in it? Of course, you may not be able to talk about it, but in addition to Rancher, what is your plan? Obviously, Rancher was, uh, you know, I mean, 
you know, we have, uh, you know, been big fans of, of uh, Darren Shepard and, you know, the original kind of rancher team uh, building out that, that piece of software. And uh, we've been we've been pretty big fans of, of all of their work, including, you know, K3S, as you know, vCluster uh, is, is heavy user of, of K3S as well. Um, so for us, that was a very, very natural, um, you know, first integration to build. Uh, but, you know, We've already built, you know, integrations into uh, with Terraform and with, um, you know, HashiCorp uh, Vault, for example. Um, so we're definitely expanding into into that integration play, and we're definitely looking into uh, integrating with more uh, cluster management tools uh, in the future. That's that's going to be a big part of our strategy as well. Any company that you're working on, any project you're working on that you can share at this moment in addition to Rancher? Or you're like, oh, we'll talk about it when it's ready. We'll talk about it when it's ready. Very perfect. So, which also <laughs> gives me a hint that, you know, when it's ready, that something <laughs> is in the pipeline. So, thanks for that. Uh, can you also talk a bit about uh, uh, customers, you know, when it, either it's vCluster Pro or the users of vCluster, what mm. kind of use cases you're seeing, and if you can name drop. Yeah, I think our customer base is classically, you know, the, uh, the ones with a lot of Kubernetes clusters. So that obviously means, uh, you know, large, you know, global Fortune 500 uh, type companies that don't want us uh, to, to, to drop their names. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's other companies that, you know, allow us to, to speak about them and, you know, where you can find case studies on our website. Um, Atlan is a great uh, example. Uh, they are a data management uh, company. Um, I think GoFundMe uh, has some stories on our website uh, as well. Uh, CoreWeave obviously was was one of our biggest uh, stories um, in in Chicago at KubeCon. Actually, given that we you know first kind of went public about them being a customer, and uh, we now have uh, Lintusarta as a customer uh, that works on on GPUs in uh, Indonesia. Um, so we're kind of spreading internationally as well with a lot of uh, cloud providers um, that want to do, you know, similar managed Kubernetes offerings as, uh, you know, for example, a core we've uh, has done uh, in the US market specifically focused on GPUs. There's going to be more specialized cloud providers in every country uh, top, tapping into, 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 into other scenarios. Are there any specific, of course, as you said, you, know, you cannot name those big companies, but any specific industries, verticals, or use cases that you're like, hey, this is where VCustery is being consumed heavily? It's actually very broad. So we have a couple in the financial sector. We have uh, insurance companies. Uh, you know, we have uh, car manufacturers using us. Um, so all mission critical, you know, very, very, you know, kind yeah, of sensitive it's, it's, industries. It's it's very sensitive industries, yeah. Like energy companies as well. Uh, I think there's, uh, there's some really, really interesting uh, areas. But yeah, I think the more complex it gets, you know, a lot of like regulated industries, uh, a lot of folks that can't use the, you know, very lightweight or not even, I, I don't even want to call it isolation, right? But like the separation you get from namespaces is just not acceptable to them at all. So they have to spin up, you know, hundreds or thousands of clusters. Um, vCluster is obviously ideal for these kind of folks. Can you also share, if possible, what kind of roadmap you have for vCluster Pro? So for vCluster Pro, I think one of the biggest topics that we're, uh, you know, focusing on right now is day two operations. Um, so obviously if you have a fleet of virtual clusters, ultimately, you want to make sure you set up your monitoring and lo your logging up for these virtual clusters. Then, you know, things like um, how to back up uh, a lot of virtual clusters and have like, you know, disaster recovery and mechanisms for virtual clusters is really important. How to upgrade virtual clusters, you know. Um, you know, we just uh, had, a, you know, obviously there's a lot of folks uh, using vCluster open source. We just had a company come to our booth today and, and say, hey, we run like 300 plus virtual clusters in production um, and we're starting to get afraid of how to upgrade them and we're like that's exactly what vCluster Pro is about and uh, one of the most exciting things we're, we're starting to build for, for vCluster Pro is uh, the snapshotting functionality. So you can essentially just like a VM you can take a snapshot of an entire cluster and it pushes the cluster's state into an OCI registry so kind of like a container image but instead of an image of a container, it's an image of an entire Kubernetes cluster. Well, that's something really exciting because you can take backups in seconds or you can 
move a Kubernetes cluster, a virtual cluster from one cloud to another cloud or from one data, data center region to another data center region or you know, from your private cloud to the public cloud. Uh, I think that's going to be very, very exciting. Uh, this is not available yet, but it's a, it's a really big R&D topic for us. And uh, yeah, I'm sure once, uh, you know, once, uh, once this is in, in beta or we can, we can uh, give it into the hands of customers, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that topic. And since we are talking about product, I want to now talk about the company also. You folks have grown you know, tremendously. Uh, your booths is getting bigger and bigger every year. <laughs> Talk about the growth of the company. Yeah, we've been we've been growing quite a bit. Uh, you know, we uh, grew our revenue uh, by four x last year. Um, we've been um, increasing the number of team members, so uh, we are over thirty five people at this point. Uh, and I think we onboarded just this year alone. We added we added like seven or eight, and it's only it's only March at this point. Uh, so. Yeah, we're, we're definitely growing quite quickly. Of course, you know, the Kubernetes ecosystem is maturing. Uh, some pain points are still there, you know, you know, the complexity is there, cost is there. What are your opinion on that as part of the ecosystem? Yeah, I think one, one big question that came up this KubeCon is uh, how to deal with GPU workloads and Kubernetes. Uh, you know, I think my uh, CTO was joking yesterday after the keynote and said, "Like that feels like we're at AI con, right? Everybody's talking about AI workloads and uh, about how to run uh, GPU workloads, uh, you know, through Kubernetes." And I think that's a definitely a very, very hot topic, right? And I think there is, uh, you know, obviously CoreWeave is a, is a pretty big uh, pioneer uh, in that space, and you know, we're super blessed to be kind of at that heartbeat working uh, with them. Uh, on a lot of these topics, and uh, I think the broader community is is putting a lot of work in in that direction as well right now. It's definitely a hot topic. What does Gen AI mean for Loft Lab, or what? How do you look at Gen AI workloads? So we can look at it from either perspective. We are almost a layer deeper uh, than a lot of the application uh, layer. I think uh, you're right. That there's definitely a lot of application layer companies right now either incorporating AI or even uh, as you mentioned, Acorn like pivoting entirely um, towards uh, building that uh, open source LLM stack is I think how they call it. Um, it's super exciting. I think for us, the key is to be an enabler for that platform uh, layer um, that, that essentially enables application creation. Uh, but for, for us, it's really about the Kubernetes API and how we make that more accessible and more uh, ubiquitous for any of these workloads, right? Um, so yeah, we're almost a layer layer deeper. Now, I just want to look at a higher level. We talked about the roadmap for vCluster Pro. Can you share the roadmap for Loft Labs? Oh, that's a good question. So we obviously have another open source project uh, called DevPod, which uh, created a lot of buzz last year. Uh, I think we just crossed about, I think, was it 7,000 GitHub stars a few days ago? Uh, within, you know, just, I think it's been nine months since we open sourced it. Uh, so quite a bit of traction uh, so far. Uh, you know, it's been uh, not a commercial uh, endeavor. It's it's been mostly really building out the community and and focusing on on the open source project. Uh, but we will definitely also uh, work on the commercial path and and make sure you know like we get we get a lot of um, inbound interest and we have this initial you know beta product, you know, which is like a private beta right now uh, with, um, you know, with DevPod Pro out there. Uh, but it's it's very early stages. It's it's very much about partnering with these early design partners that that, that we're finding uh, rather than, uh, you know, a streamlined, hey, you know, like with vCluster and vCluster Pro, very mature open source project, very, very clear value proposition in the commercial part um, for, uh, for DevPod. Uh, you know, we're, we're still in the early days of that journey, but it's a very exciting one as well. Lucas, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course share these updates, uh, great insights there. And as usual, I look forward to chat with you again, so thank you. Yeah, always good meeting you here, Swapno.